So I'm Charles from SNP. SNP as a credit rating agency, or the SNP 500. Uh, I lead everything that is related to DeFi, but also tokenization, digital assets, and uh, and the like. So let me see. Perfect. So I want to touch on uh, stablecoin, of course, here, but also and mainly on the assessment of stablecoin and the product we launch. And after that, at the end, I'll touch on uh, an exciting next step. So as you probably alre already know, stablecoin had issue uh, along the way. Some had DPEGs, some totally collapsed because of those DPEGs. So this is just, um, the list is not exhaustive, but it's just a, a reminder of some of the big one. In March, one of the latest and, and very relevant one was the USDC one where uh, Circle was affected by the, the issue of the Silicon Valley Bank. So when we launched my team around almost three years ago, we've been asked a lot to provide a visibility on the risk of stablecoin. After the collapse of uh, UST, we, of course, were asked even more. So we started to work on a product, which I'll describe a bit here which is free and accessible to all. I'll give you the link on the next slide. And we started with uh, eight stable coin, which were the, the biggest. And something very important to remember is that um, the, those reports are monitored, so it's not a point in time evaluation. It's something that is constantly looked at and we will continue to add more and more stable coin. We added uh, USDM in March and we're working a few more. So with this QR code, in case you want to get direct access to the report on the web page, you can just use that, or you just Google stablecoin SNP, uh, and, and you should find this uh, fairly fast. So what is it exactly? First, you need to understand that in um, it's a bridge for TradFi in DeFi, in general for the stablecoin. TradFi is used to have third party evaluation that are not part of any deal. And, and can be a trusted uh, evaluation of risk. It's focusing on DPEG, so it's not a rating, it's not a probability of default, it's a probability of DPEG. And it's really meant to uh, bring transparency on the weakness and the strengths of different stable coins. Hey. Yeah. Um, I'll go fast on this one because I, I know everything's big behind. I've been asked to, to cut down a bit. So this is something you can get from the link I was giving before, and that's the actual methodology of how the evaluation works. So you might have seen in the news, made a, a lot of news when we launched uh, the, the SSA, uh, the stability, uh, stable coin stability assessment of USDT, that they had uh, a four. So here you can see the different uh, meaning of every uh, score, but first I explain the, the flow. So everything starts with the assets. What are the assets? What are the what is the credit risk of the asset? The market risk, all type of risk of the asset, as well as the mechanism for liquidation and uh, the over collateralization they have. From that, you'll have a first score, which is from one to five, one being the best, five being the worst, and that's just the score you have on your assets. After that, you have all the factors that you can see here. All those factors, so there's governance, legal, uh, uh, liquidity, third party dependency, track record, all those factors can only bring you one notch down. You cannot go higher, you will just go down through that. And then you'll have your final uh, grade. Here you can see the score of every stable coin score so far, with USDC, Gemini, and Paxos at the top and uh, true USD and FRAX at the bottom. As you can see, for instance, something like uh, true USD or USDC started as core and had a negative adjustment, which is what I touched on just before, and, and went one notch down. Something very interesting to, uh, and important to understand is the difference between the SSA and the scoring and a rating. A rating is something which is very heavily regulated it's solicited, so you need to come to us and ask for a rating. Uh, the SSA is not. It's unsolicited. We decide when and on who we do uh, a scoring, and uh, you, like nobody really has uh, a decision except us on that. 
It's a priority of depend, not a priority of default. It is free, while rating is, is not, and it's based only on public information. And that's something very interesting that leads to the, the, the part that uh, I like the most, which is once we launched this product, we've been reached out by many, many stable coins that do not exist yet. Some that are made by regions that want to have the regulated stable coin of their region, uh, backed sometimes by royal family. There is many banks that told us we want to do this stable coin in our own currency, or we want to do one bank said seven stable coins. And well, none of those can go into the SSA because the SSA, like the Stable Coin Stability Assessment, is only with public information. But what they can all do, and there's a lot of conversation with that, uh, with all those different entities, is an actual rating. So what I'm expecting, uh, and what we're, we're all already saying in my teams, is that in the medium term, most of the stable coin, yield bank stable coin, tokenized treasury, tokenized um, money market fund, different product with Bitcoin as a collateral, tokenized CLO will be rated. And if you're working on that kind of project, well, you should come to me to discuss if your product, your offering can be rated or not. If you want a quicker access to the SSA, you don't have to use necessarily only the link that I shared. It's now integrated in uh, LWXYZ on their stablecoin page. And it's also on, on Artemis.xyz, both LWA platform that have a focus on, on stablecoin. If you want to contact me, that's all my social information. The QR code is for LinkedIn, which is what I'm using the most. And I'll stop here and giving you some time back.